We're well and truly into winter here in Sydney, Australia, and all my North American pitcher plants and Venus's flytraps have gone dormant. They've basically stopped growing, and it's a necessary stage for their long-term survival. But did you know that not all carnivorous plants need to go dormant? In this video, I'm going to be highlighting some of those carnivorous plants so you can continue enjoying your winter gardening, even though some of your other carnivorous plants may be asleep. You know, a really excellent way to learn about how different species of carnivorous plants adapt to the changes in the seasons is to have your own little miniature garden. In this little miniature garden, I've got various species of carnivorous plants and they're all adapting in their own unique way to the cooler weather. So let's have a closer look. All right, so let's have a look at how my plants are adapting to this cooler weather very hard to go past this lice bag of the moss it really is making a presence there with its lush green leaves now that it's cooler it's really going out in the open more in the warmer months the lice bag of the moss grew around the base of the pumice stone planters more and it enjoyed the filtered light through the venus flytrap leaves or any other leaves that were providing the filtered light that's because the sphagnum moss likes the cooler weather and it adapted to the warmer weather by as I said growing around the base of the pumice stone planters where it's nice and cool and enjoying the filtered light and believe it or not there is a pumice stone planter here as well as over here it's just at the Venus fly trap I think it started off with just one plant and it just really flourished and to the point where you can't even see the planter anymore but that's just an example of how one plant, one species of plant, is reacting to this cooler weather. Now the really cool thing about live sphagnum moss is that you can break pieces off and place that onto peat moss. You've got to make sure that it's quite damp, that peat moss. And then what will happen is that piece will start to grow all by itself. So I've done that over here, just broken a bit off. Just place that in there. As I said, it's important that you ensure that that peat moss is nice and damp. And that section will start to grow. Now, just to let you guys know, a lot of growers don't know this, is that live sphagnum moss breaks down to peat moss. And peat moss is where the roots of the carnivorous plants grow. So that's what this is over here. This is uh, peat moss. That's why you commonly find live sphagnum moss growing amongst the carnivorous plants out in the wild. So it's always a good addition to have in your <coughs> carnivorous plants garden. Just place it on top of the peat moss and so long as that peat moss is nice and damp, it will start to grow. So I've placed a few pieces over here and it really is a nice and easy way of prettying up your miniature garden. You can see the really bright green shoots there indicating that it is starting to grow nicely and it's comfortable. So that's one species really loving this colder wintry conditions. So in contrast to the sphagnum moss, you have another species of plant. This is a carnivorous plant which is well and truly dormant. It's basically stopped growing for the winter. And this is the Venus's flytrap. So as I said earlier, I planted a Venus flytrap into this planter and another one over there. And it really has produced a lot of offshoots to the point where it looks like it's a hundred plants in each planter. But this is a species of carnivorous plant that you really need to respect its dormancy. You need to provide that winter dormancy for its long-term survival. You can tell that this plant is dormant because of the older leaves here, these blackened leaves. They were produced in summer autumn or summer fall. And those leaves have been replaced with these green leaves. These are winter leaves. And these winter leaves are shorter and stubbier. So the leaf base, which is this part just before the trap, 
there's shorter, stubbier, and they're actually quite wrinkly as well. See how there's a bit of a wrinkle there, a bit of a wave? So that's an indication that your plant is dormant. And the fact that it's winter now and it, these plants are dormant, I'm happy because I know that it's a necessary requirement. So much like a, a bear needs to go into its den in the winter and uh, sleep, these Venus fly traps and North American pitcher plants for that matter do the same thing. They need to go dormant or sleep or whatever you want to call it or to, res to uh, replenish their energy reserves to be able to come out again in early spring and survive long term. Okay, so we spoke about the Venus's flytrap being dormant. This is a species of carnivorous plant which is reacting to the cooler temperatures in its own unique way. So these small plants are called tropical sundews or Drosera burmanite. So these plants here are around about say a centimetre, centimetre and a half across. They're quite small. They're quite red in colour. And you can see how some of them are starting to die off. Now, as the name implies, tropical sundews enjoy the warmer weather. So they can't really handle temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius for prolonged periods of time. So here in Sydney, we've been getting some really cold nights. At the start of winter, we had a polar blast, which really sent temperatures down below 10 degrees Celsius overnight. And as a result, it really has knocked around some of these plants. These plants uh, are starting to die off. However, some are still okay, even though they'd be sort of struggling a bit. Now, the reason why they're so red is because there's not many insects around, okay? And because, in, in addition to the cooler weather, they become smaller and they redden up a bit. Now, I just want to show you a few pictures here of what the same plants look like in the warmer months. You can see that they are a lot greener. They had a lot more food around, and as a result, they were a lot larger as well. Some plants got to around about three, even three and a half centimeters across. So that just shows you how much happier they were in the warmer months. Now, I'm not too concerned that a lot of these plants are dying off. The reason is because these plants in the wild love to live in the fast lane okay so what they do when the times are good they grow profusely they produce plenty of seeds and then those seeds get dispersed and then when it dries up the plants start to die off because of lack of water and then when the rains uh, come around again up sprout the seeds in my case, it's not the, f the fact that there's not enough water that's causing them to die off. It's because, because I've got plenty of water in here. It's because of the cooler temperatures. But even if they were to all die off, I'm pretty sure that some of the seeds that were produced in the warmer months will start to sprout. And I did allow these plants to produce their beautiful pink flowers. So yeah, not too concerned about them dying off, but that's the Drosera burmanite, how they're reacting to the cooler temperatures. The cool thing about Drosera burmanite, otherwise known as the tropical sundew, is that even though it might be cold outside and they're starting to deteriorate, you can bring your plants indoors where it's nice and warm. And in doing so, you can continue growing your plant. So, for example, if you're noticing your plants starting to deteriorate because of the cold weather in the winter, what you could do is bring your plants indoors, place it on a sunny windowsill. So in the southern hemisphere, that would be a north-facing windowsill. Make sure it's getting plenty of sunlight and it's nice and warm, which is what the plants like. Or what you could do, you could actually place your plants under artificial lights and continue growing them that way. So this is an example of a plant, carnivorous plant, that you can continue growing, all right? You can continue growing it without 
um, disrupting its growing cycle. So this is in contrast, of course, to North American pitcher plants and Venus's flytraps, which need to stop growing. They need to go through that dormancy period in winter where they can regain their energy reserves in readiness for spring. But this is in contrast to Drosera bermini. So even though they're an annual in nature where they do die off, but in cultivation, of course, you've got more control of your growing environment, you can continue growing your plant year after year after year. So just a few tips. If you're going to bring your plants indoors, um, you're also going to have to uh, feed your plant as well because it's not um, exposed to any insects as it would outdoors. So I'm going to leave a few links in the video description just explaining um, how to look after your plants if you bring them indoors and how to feed them as well. It really does add a whole new exciting dimension to looking after carnivorous plants. So this special plant is called a Drosera spatulata. So it belongs to the same genus as Drosera bermini. But this plant over here, unlike the Drosera bermini, doesn't die off during the growing season. It doesn't, um, it's not an annual. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. Now, I just love these spatula shaped leaves. That's the reason why it's called Drosera spatulata. And I just wanted to point out, look at this leaf over here. See how it's bent over? That's because it's caught something. I see a lot of black ants scurrying around this miniature garden. So I'm pretty sure that one of those ants has mistakenly um, climbed onto the, or crawled onto the leaf. And in response, the leaf has curled over to envelop it and to digest it. But this is a plant which doesn't require dormancy. So if you want to grow a plant that continues to grow through the winter, this is a great selection. Uh, it's just a really, really special plant to have. And as I said, it doesn't require dormancy. It just keeps growing. The fact that the leaves are being produced, there's new leaves being produced there, and the fact that it's catching prey and digesting it and indicates that this is not dormant, it's just growing through the winter. Now, like the Drosera bermini, the tropical sundew, these uh, plants have got a wide, wide area. So they're found, Drosera spatulata are found um, in Southeast Asia, all the way down to the east coast of Australia. So depending on where they're found, that will uh, dictate the form that you find them in. So just like tropical sundews, you can find different forms based on where they grow. Some have different shaped leaves slightly, some are larger, some have even got um, different colours as well. So um, Drosera, the genus Drosera, which are sundews, are very widespread and they're very, very adaptable to varying conditions. So here's a species of carnivorous plant which has adapted to the cold, wintry conditions here in its own unique way. But this species is called Drosera banata T-form. It's a species of Drosera which is found in the temperate regions here in Australia, where it's quite cold. And in surviving the winter, it dies down to the roots. Now, this woody stem material here is part of that plant. I started off with this plant here at the start of this uh, miniature garden when I created it. And over the years, it's run across the tray and produced one, two more new shoots. So, unlike Drosera bermini and Drosera spatulata, it does require dormancy. As far as I know that is and uh, that's what you're seeing here with this brown dead stem material and this is how the plant looked like during the warmer months So here's another example of a carnivorous plant which doesn't require winter dormancy. This is a Drosera capensis, otherwise known as the Cape Sundew. 
and this here started off as one plant but it's producing two new stems there but uh, it's producing these leaves and even though we've been getting these cold nights it hasn't stopped this plant from growing and not only that it's produced this flower stalk as well and that flower stalk was produced in the last three weeks despite the cold temperatures here's another plant over here producing new leaves it hasn't produced any flower stalk but it did produce these flower stalks in late autumn or late fall and I've just left them on there so hopefully now you have a better idea about how the various species of carnivorous plants adapt differently to the cold wintry conditions. The Venus's flytraps for example, they stop growing, they go completely dormant in winter. Then you have Drosera banata, which die back down to the roots. And then you have other species of carnivorous plants which don't need to stop growing throughout their growing cycle. The Drosera bermini for example, even though they might die off, you can still bring them in during the winter where it's nice and warm. You can grow them under those lights and feed them and they will continue to grow year after year after year. Then with those other the tropical, subtropical sundews such as Drosera capensis and Drosera spatulata, you can just leave them outside and they'll just continue to grow. It's all examples of carnivorous plants which don't necessarily need to go dormant or stop growing during their life cycle. Until next time everyone, happy growing.